Hi, and welcome to another Blending Mode class lesson at Hummies World. If you've just stumbled on this video on YouTube or on my website, I encourage you to come to the website, look up the Blending Mode class, and do them in order because they do kind of build on each other. And we are learning as we are building on each other. If you have been following along them all, with them all, welcome back. I'm glad you're here with me. I'm having a lot of fun learning and I hope you are having a lot of fun learning too. So we are looking at the first section was darken, the next section was lighten, and we are going through currently the contrast section and um, everything is kind of coming together a little bit more. At, because each one of these uh, refers back to combining some dark and some light blending modes. And so um, we are all the way down to linear light. And it combines the linear dodge and the linear burn. The linear dodge and the linear burn and the linear light all start with linear, so that's pretty easy to remember what it combines. Now, um, the values greater than 50% gray use the linear dodge, and the values less than 50% gray use the linear burn. This is very similar to some of the other contrast blending modes that we've done. Um, here's the math of it though. We've, we've said this before. It's all about the math. It's all about what the programmers have told the program to do mathematically in the background. Um, it has to have some sort of formula to follow. And so here's what this one does, it's the sum of the bottom layer and twice the top layer and subtract 255. Now I want to go back real quick. Remember the linear burn? Did, did you hopefully remember that, ah, I heard that somewhere before? It was the linear burn. It adds the value of two layers the top and the bottom, it adds the value, the number of values that we've talked about previously, and it subtracts 255. And we actually, I think, did the math in that video. Um, and so if you want to go watch that video, if you need a refresher, you should go find that one. That was because that was simple math. Well, this one's simple, but it's a little bit more complicated. And, and to rephrase it, you're going to take the top layer and times it by 2, and then you're going to add the bottom layer number, and then you're going to subtract it by 255. And that's how it's going to get the result. <coughs> so it's a, um, a little bit similar to the linear burn, but obviously if you're adding doubling the top layer's number, it's going to get quite bright. Because remember 255 is white. 255 plus 255, you can't go over 255. So everything is going to get much lighter than in the linear burn. Okay, so let's look at our graphic. Here's our graphic that we are doing with every single one of them. And I want to go ahead this time and start at the overlay. And you're going to recall that the 50% gray doesn't change, but everything on this side gets lighter and everything on this side gets darker. And then we went to soft light, very similar, just a little bit different. Hard light, very similar, but just a little bit different. Vivid light, very vivid. Linear light. So it looks linear. <laughs> I don't know when I think, I'm not quite sure I know what linear means. I, I should have uh, Googled that. When I think of linear, I think of space, <laughs> the final frontier. Um, I wonder why. <laughs> anyway, um, or lines. I don't see lines. It's definitely finite. So let's go back through them. Overlay, soft, hard light, vivid light, linear light. So that's what linear light looks like. And the whites are very white and the darks are very dark. 
So let's go over to my sample. And this is what I came up with. I was at the park yesterday, uh, at the dog park, and I didn't have my jacket on. It was 59 degrees according to my car. And I actually saw on Facebook others saying it was like 63. But, um, and then the forecast is for tomorrow morning for it to be like 9 degrees. <laughs> so I was out there like just thinking to myself, this is a spring tease. They keep teasing me. And we get these little days where you're so, oh, this is so wonderful and blue skies. And oh, I guess not. Okay. It's not going to happen. So um, let's dissect this or deconstruct as we say dissect that would be like an animal um here's my original photo i just took from the view of the dog park i'm inside the fence this is outside the fence <laughs> and um, i thought that beautiful blue sky would be great for some blending mode and this particular blending mode being linear light is going to make things really uh bright um, really saturated and so here it is the art paper and let's take it back to normal and up the opacity and so there you can see uh, we have it uh, I, this is uh, actually a piece of jean material that I glued down on my paper uh, blue jean material and then I painted over it and um, uh, sprayed black and white and so it's got a lot of interesting stuff going on and it would do, be fun to blend and see what each of the blending modes did and when you're doing this as with all of the other contrast ones it's really helpful to get more of a neutral uh, shade and not a whole lot of whites and not a whole lot of blacks you can see that the white in here is kind of a little bit difficult with this blending mode the black isn't too black but the white is so let's go down to the linear light and you go whoa hello uh <laughs> oh my goodness bright lights bright lights get me out of here okay opacity we're going to start lowering you and I'm going to lower it pretty low like to 30 I think is around where I had it and you can see when I lower it to 30 where the white spots are it's not so bad it looks like little splatters I think this blending mode no matter <laughs> what you use you're going to have to lower the opacity unless you have a very 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 subtle texture with not much change at all on it then then it might be okay without much many lights and darks on it then it might be okay and so um, there's what I did uh, the before and the after and so you know the opacity is going to depend on your photo and what it does with your photo maybe you have a very dull photo and you like it that it brightens it up um, and saturates it and you won't have to lower the opacity so much but uh, I'm anxious to see what you do with it and so I added my text and then um, for these other two layers you know I wanted to do something to make it a little bit more artistic I, I changed the title and I got some colors from the dead grass to bring that color up here a little bit and, um, and then I made my original layer, the active layer. Just got my marquee tool. We may have done this stuff before, but we're going to do it again because it's just simple and easy. And I um, made the selection around it. I made sure this photo layer was the active layer and hit Control J and it duplicated that inner part. Um, see, that's what we made and then I went and added a drop shadow now you'll remember when we add the drop shadows you want to keep the distance really low so that you can see it all the way around when you raise the distance the top and the side um, kind of disappear and uh, then you know I just played with the spread and the size and 
Ooh, that's kind of ugly because you got to lower the opacity and now it looks pretty and I did a whole lot of other playing um, because I thought what else can I do that's still kind of boring and so I decided to set off the dates a little bit and so I went and I did the exact same thing with my selection tool around my dates hit control J and you know I think this time though uh, when I hit control J it, it carried my layer style with it so it has the same layer style um, but uh, I went in here actually and played and I changed that to the linear light blending mode because you know with each of these we are trying to um, use the same texture everybody and just one blending mode at the end of the class we're going to start combining and doing more fun things so um, you try to use just the linear light and you know I think I lowered this um, I don't know what I did but that looks pretty good right there and then that was my image so I'm going to actually remove these two that I just made and go back to the original and you can see that's uh, what I ended up with and so I uh, get out there download my texture um, share with us what you do with this one texture in one blending mode and uh, um, try not to use too much else and uh, you can use any of the previous tips in in my um, tutorials from using masks um, to you know fun things with texts and and whatnot uh, now I don't know if in Photoshop elements you can change this to linear light I got a open up Photoshop Elements and see but um, most all of this stuff you could do in Photoshop Elements also and uh, hey I'm having fun and I sure hope you are too see your stuff